Today, I'm leaving my iPhone and Apple Watch, and instead, welcome to my day in the life with the Samsung Flip 4 and Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. My day starts with a quick wake up, checking on my social accounts, seeing the kids off to school, and then driving to the gym for my daily gym sesh. Whilst driving, I noticed my first issue with using a flip phone in that the wireless charger in my Tesla wouldn't charge as the phone isn't high enough. Gordon, my videographer for the day, was also a personal trainer in another life. So he gave me a few exercises to do and I'm sure I'm gonna be aching the next day. A cheeky bacon roll and a fresh orange juice next to undo the work I've just put in at the gym. Thank you very much. Whilst I check on my social media and respond to messages. To order my breakfast, I used the app at my David Lloyd gym and ran into my second issue for the day. All right, so I've just finished a workout. We're trying to use strong on the Android phone. However, where I've come over from an iPhone, you have to move over the, the membership to strong on the Android phone, which hasn't let me do that because I've signed in with Apple on the iPhone account. So I'm just trying to figure that thing out. So I'm gonna fix that, do a few emails, which is a bit difficult because I've got my laptop in my bag. So I'm thinking about using my laptop maybe for that. Have a bacon roll for my post-workout kind of breakfast, which is good, bit of orange juice. And then we're gonna go do some work in a bit. Turned out to be a very annoying problem. Now I normally use Apple Pay, which of course isn't available on Android. So I tried using Google Pay in the app, which threw an error up every time I tried using it in this app. So the app's crashed but so far and the Google Pay's crash so far as well. So uh, two for two this morning so far. It's going well. No matter how many times I tried opening, closing, it just never worked. So I tried adding my cards into Samsung Pay, only to find that Samsung Pay doesn't support my card from one of the mainstream UK banks. Now, thankfully, I had 1Password installed ready for this instance. So instead, I used 1Password to automatically fill in my credit card information to pay manually on the app. Later on, I actually found out that Samsung recommends you sign up for a third-party service called Curve that lets you have one physical card and then uses an app to change which card is actually used behind the scenes, which is kind of great, you might think, except the free version of Curve is just limited to two cards and also if you don't have any phone signal, you can't change the cards that's been used. Now after the cheeky bacon roll, it was back home to research and write the script for some future videos. Okay. So yeah, if the phone dies, can't actually get into the house. So I'm gonna script some videos today. We're gonna to do some on the Redmi 4 Buds, 4 Pros, which have been sent to me. So I'm gonna have a check and see what those are like. And also Poco sent me phones to review. So Poco M5S, which I have no idea actually what it is. So I'm gonna be scripting a video about that one today. But for now, we're gonna do some work. We're gonna script the videos. I'm gonna try out these Redmi Buds 4 Pros, which look a lot like AirPods. So we're gonna... Uh, Give them a try. And actually, I've been quite impressed. At about 50 pounds, they fit and stay in my ear, which is something that even the most expensive AirPods Pros struggle to do. And incidentally, if you have the AirPod Pros and struggle with staying them in the ears, I'll link to a video where I'll explain how to solve that problem. Now with Redmi Buds, I did find it difficult to tell if noise cancellation was actually on or off, but the audio they produced was pretty reasonable. And what I'm listening to this morning is coming from my new favorite productivity hack, Brain FM, which plays scientifically designed music that helps focus your mind on what you're doing. I thought it was a load of rubbish when I first came across it, but honestly, this service is crazy, crazy good and it's cheap. There's a link down below that will get you a small discount and a free trial. Honestly, just give it a go. It's something I literally use every single day of my life now. So we are at 11 o'clock now. Um, this is just a battery check-in, quick battery check-in. We've just been browsing social media and the usual kind of thing. We're down to 80%, which is surprising considering we haven't actually used the phone a huge amount yet. I needed to give my friend Chris a quick call to arrange to meet up with him in Brighton later this afternoon. And here is where I ran into yet another issue. There is no stock video calling app installed on the Flip. There's no like Samsung video calling. And I had to install Google Duo, which then told me it had changed to Google Meet. So I had to fire up Google Meet and then try calling Chris. But then nothing happened. He didn't answer. And so we actually ended up FaceTiming on our Macs to figure out what was happening. Hello? Hey, I can hey. hear you. Yep, I can hear you. This is Gordon, the random camera you can see behind me. This is Gordon. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Um, how do we get it working on um, Android? I think you need to install Google Meet on your phone. Okay, cool. Right, let me do that. I had to tell him to install Google Meet and then figure out what account he was assigned into and then call that account. Uh, honestly, FaceTime is so much easier. It's a pretty frustrating experience. And I can imagine like the fun and games I would have when trying to explain this to uh, an elderly relative or someone who isn't as tech savvy like Chris. Now I guess the phrase, it just worked with an iPhone, still definitely applies. Once we were set up though, the video call was, you know, was just fine. Like no issues with the video or audio quality. I found that folding this phone slightly gave me some fun effects to play around with. Not something I'd personally use, but I know loads of younger people like to use these. So uh, yeah, not for me. I'm just too old now. We're also down to 67% battery now. So we are probably gonna have to charge somewhere along the way. But otherwise it's pretty good. 
Right, so we're obviously doing a day in the life of like vlogging day today and um, wanted to go grab some lunch. Um, Gordon's got his massive, <laughs> massive camera in front of him there, which he's carrying around with him. And I thought I'd try and film some uh, more inconspicuous uh, footage on this tiny, obviously, little flip phone. Benefit being, you don't have to uh, have the whole phone unfolded to use the camera. You can just use it like this with the screen pointed at you. I can even see notifications coming through, which is pretty cool, um, whilst I'm filming. So yeah, we're gonna grab some lunch and uh, hopefully film this with uh, very inconspicuous, because I don't really do vlogging, as you might tell. We don't really do public vlogging. And this is quite a handy way of doing it without having a whole uh, massive camera shooting at you. So uh, yeah, let's go get some food. Over lunch, I caught up on my favorite YouTube shows. Now this was something I actually really enjoyed using the Flip 4. It was great to be able to prop the phone up and be able to watch the videos, though I do kind of wish I could do this horizontally. Basically the Fold phone instead of the Flip. Maybe subscribe and you'll be able to see that one coming very, very soon. An appearance from my daughter briefly, who's about to start school, and we get back into the car to drive to Brighton and meet Chris. Now on the way to Brighton, I had my phone hooked up to the car via Bluetooth and listening to about half an hour of Spotify and then maybe an hour playing YouTube videos, but with the screen closed so I could just listen to them. And when I went to park, I was really shocked to see that over 10% of the battery had been drained by that one hour 30 car journey. So at this stage, I'm very, very aware that I'm gonna need to charge pretty soon. And something else I noticed, not sure how I didn't until now, was that my Galaxy Watch 5 was really low on battery. So either it didn't charge properly last night or the workout this morning really, really killed it. And a bit of a note here, it did turn out that the charging dock I was sent to review is just, it's really crap because the charger overheats and then stops charging the watch overnight. So you won't be seeing a review of one of those. So the watch, we, we did our workout this morning and I'm down to 12% battery on my watch. So either it didn't charge properly last night or, um, the one hour workouts done it in so i haven't brought a charger for me so i guess i'm gonna try it again tomorrow and just see what the charge looks like tomorrow um also my phone is down to so down to 19 percent battery i was listening to youtube videos in the car so i was like using it to play youtube videos and listening to it for like half an hour and then playing music for the other half an hour or an hour or so whilst we we're in there so it's eaten a lot of battery because i think we we're at like 40 percent when we left the house so it's eaten a lot now, speak of charging, we parked up to charge the Tesla and again, used one password to create an account with a secure password and fill in my card details, all without physically carrying any cards on me all the time. I basically carry no wallets and no keys with me anytime since everything I can do can be done on my phone. My car, the house, though, of course, going back to the Flip 4 battery, that means I do really need to charge soon or I won't be able to get home, let alone get in my actual house. So we went for a quick meeting in a cafe that Chris says serves the best hot chocolate in town whilst we talk strategy and look over my schedule for shooting some more YouTube videos. After a hot chocolate, which I'm not sure is, that's the hot chocolate? Yeah, uh, that's, yeah, that's the coffee. Smaller. Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Oh, okay, no, that's quite nice. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Dark hot chocolate. Yeah, yeah that's right. Mocha. You don't like mocha, do you? No. It was definitely one of the nicest hot chocolates I've ever tasted. A little bit too rich to finish all of it, but very, very tasty. Now I plug my phone into the new Anchor, like literal brick of a charger that can charge up to 100 watts. It can charge my MacBook Air here as well. And the Flip 4 can charge up to 25 watts, super fast charging, they say. Except I only got around six watts when charging here, and I managed to get up to 10 watts when I put the phone into airplane mode. Now I went through the settings to check that fast charging was enabled, flipped it on and off a few times, but still no change. And to cut a long story short, I ended up charging the phone for two hours and only got to 50% charge, which is pretty disappointing in all honesty. One thing I am definitely loving though is the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro. Now, whilst we walked around Bryson, it was automatically detecting and starting workouts when it thought we were walking. That's something that really annoys me with the Apple Watch. It will tell you, you know, hey, you started a workout 30 minutes ago. Would you like me to start a workout for you now? And it only actually starts tracking the workout from when you hit yes. Now the Watch 5 Pro works really, really well. It's, it's really fast. It suffers none of the slowness issues I experienced on the Watch 4 last year. I do wish they had the rotating bezel from last year, given the size of this thing, but I I am quickly falling in love with this watch. Suitably impressed by the watch and realizing the battery was getting quite low though, I decided to put it in low power mode just to make sure I reached the end of the day and, and see how that performed. Anyway, on we went with snapping a few photos and took a few videos at Brighton Beach and the arcades. Now the Flip 4 does only have two lenses, the standard and the ultra wide, so I did miss having the telephoto from my iPhone, but the images it took were they're still really sharp. The video was also okay. And although I always say that Android phones all have a shutter lag, honestly, in real world, I didn't actually notice it this time around. We played some arcade games and someone spotted Gordon's mahusive camera and came over to ask if he was a YouTuber, which was fun for a few minutes. But then we realized that we were running really late for the i360, which we booked to get a really cool like bird's eye view over Brighton. So we dashed over, only to find that we missed our slot, unfortunately. But thankfully, after some sweet talking from yours truly, the operator let us in on the next one. 
and up we went. So we are going up the i360 to take some photos, some videos, and I've never been up it before. So it'll be interesting to see how high it goes and uh, what it's like. It was meant to be absolutely raining today and it's not, so it's quite good weather to uh, go up very high. So we'll see what it's like, take some photos, see what the camera's like. I've heard the battery life actually gets chewed through if you uh, shoot photos and videos. So it's currently on 73% just before we go up there. And it's just coming down now. So we'll begin going up there in, what, 10 minutes? And we'll see how much battery we have left after we come back down again and compare. And this, of course, gave us a chance to test out some more features on the Flip 4. So this is just testing the uh, portrait video mode on the uh, Flip. And there's some behind me. And there's some um, next to me. It's fine with the sun behind me. Kind of. But uh, yeah, what does the audio sound like? It's kind of noisy, as you can hear. So, see what it looks like. Testing out the camera, some fun video settings, which I actually later found out creates multiple videos with different like funny music tracks. So along with like the funny faces we saw on the video calls earlier today, it does make me think that this phone might be targeted at a slightly younger demographic than myself. Again, I'm just old. We also got to enjoy the boiling hot sun and that let me test out the 772 nits, I believe, peak brightness on the flip. And whilst it's definitely not anywhere near as good as the iPhone, you know, particularly the iPhone's 2000 nits on the new iPhone 14 range, or even the Samsung S22 range, I still could see the phone in the sun, so no real issues here at all for me. Now, whilst we were going up the i360, Chris informed me that he's actually quite scared of heights. Lol. So I decided that this was my chance to help Chris get over his fear of heights. Now, I'm not quite sure if it worked. So Chris, how does it feel to be almost at the top of the uh, i360? I'm looking forward to it finishing, I have to say. Um, <laughs> it's finishing at the top or the bottom? Uh, well, it gets to the top, and then there's that sudden drop where it's... <laughs> <laughs> but he was definitely more relaxed by the time we got off. Oh, he stops. We're now at the top. So this is the, uh, the highest point, and Chris is no longer af afraid of heights. <laughs> Shake your phone <laughs> like you're scared. <laughs> I also got a chance to try out the new Insta360 RS, a 360-degree camera, which Gordon strapped into my bag like some kind of third-person computer game. Makes for some really interesting footage, that's for sure. So I definitely need to play around with using this in more videos in future. So initial impressions of the camera is it's pretty good. The um, portrait video seems to be better than the iPhone's like cinematic view of the video, which, um, yeah, it's quite impressive because the uh, iPhone, you get lots of fuzziness around like hairlines and things. This, you don't seem to but we're gonna review the footage uh, back in the uh, studio and see what it looks like. Photos look good. Portrait mode is surprisingly impressive. Um, even their weird one that blurs like everything out seems to be pretty good at picking out kind of you from the photo. So um, yeah, doing pretty well. Battery life, we're at 67%. So gone down, what's that, like 5% or so? Not too bad. Now, once we were down and out, it was a brisk walk to a Vietnamese restaurant called Pho, apparently pronounced Pho, where we met up with a few friends, had a meal, and got their thoughts on the new Flip 4. Now, one thing I have noticed, though, is even though the Galaxy Watch 5 Pro is on battery saving mode, it's still prompting me about workouts, still giving me notifications, and other than switching the always-on display off, it seems to be working just like normal, and the battery life has almost completely stopped going down. I'm really, really very impressed. I went for a chicken curry, which is my go-to at this restaurant, and then asked my friends what they thought of the Flip 4. Like open it like. That is that is cool. That's definitely beautiful. Because I'm more wrinkly than that. Videos, photos, ah. portrait. portrait. Removing all the years of <laughs> years of wrinkles. Yeah, I, I kind of want to turn that setting off though because it's not true to life, is it? I get that with the iPhone though. Do you not get that with your iPhone? Yeah, see, that's the thing. I didn't even you know. Take a photo a thing. of yourself and suddenly you've got like clear skin. We were talking yeah. about this the other yeah, day. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know. I also showed them what I thought might be another issue for me over time. Last week, I took this phone to the beach every day in Devon, and it feels like sand has gotten stuck in the hinge as it makes a very gritty sound when opening and closing it sometimes. Now, at least the phone came with a year's free insurance, so I'm not really too worried about this overall, but I do wonder if, you know, over time, dirt or grime might just affect that hinge. Interesting opinions, but we're off to a cocktail bar now so we can talk a little bit more about the phone and, of course, have some cocktails. A very, very long walk this time, and again, the watch kicked in with a workout again. Thank you, of course, to my health insurance, Vitality, which gets me discounts on tech like Samsung and Apple products. Uh, link in the description to get £100 of those if uh, you're in the UK. And we got to test out the camera a little more here with some low light. Now, the footage was pretty grainy, as you can see here, but the images, to be fair, still turning out pretty well. Now, a few more questions around the Flip 4, and I think the resounding answer was that the Flip 4 is more of a ladies' phone because apparently of its similarities to like a compact mirror. Most people were quite intrigued with the whole flipping mechanism, but nobody really enamored by it. A final goodbye to my friends, and I head back to the car 
car, charging my phone once again beforehand to make sure I can actually get in since my phone is my car key. And on the way home, I popped on a few more YouTube videos, included listening to Linus Tech Tips about how he now hires over 80 staff for his YouTube channels. Hashtag YouTube goals. I also got to enjoy some awesome, awesome thunderstorms during the drive. I absolutely love a good thunderstorm. And I finally got home exhausted with 20% battery life on the flip and impressively 4% battery life on the watch. Now I have to say, after spending a whole day out with the flip, I don't think it's for me. The battery life is definitely an issue for me, even if I was able to charge at multiple opportunities throughout the day. And also the fact that Samsung Pay doesn't even support my bank card, forcing me to use this like, third party curve card, which in itself is limited on the free service. So I would definitely consider using Google Pay instead if you get one of these phones. And thankfully, 1Password has made my switch to this phone over the last few weeks. Very, very easy guys. Thank you so much to 1Password for making this video possible. And there'll be a link down below to get you 50% off a subscription. And I honestly, I, I just couldn't do my job without them. I switched phones so often that it would be painful to keep switching from Samsung Password Manager to Chrome Password Manager to Keychain to whatever the latest thing was. 1Password works on everything, everywhere, and works really, really well. That's been a day in the life. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.